Juliet? Juliet, are you all right? Oh, no, 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 no. Juliet, wake up. Romeo and Juliet, you've heard the story. The feuding families, the young boy and girl that find love, the plan to run away, the potion, and finally, death by the dagger. But it was not always so. There is another story. It begins much the same way, in a street, where two families war and no one is safe. It begins with the Montagues and the Capulets. <laughs> shall do so on the pain of death. I neither know nor care why you feel in this manner, but I suggest you wait to be a piece of one another. That hothead tip was all far and no fight. You see his right hook? Not exactly first rate, was it, Marcus? I'm sorry that it came to this. Don't mind a bit, Lord. You've always been kind to me. Marcus, you shouldn't pick fights with Tibble. He's a lot better for swords than his fists. That's all right. Bambolio came to me. Thank you, Ben. Truly, though, we should all be more careful. This isn't just bickering anymore. Blood is going to be spilt. Honestly, we shouldn't be speaking to you. Oh, get off your high horse. There was a time when I'm ashamed to talk to a monster. I'm not ashamed, just realistic. Is that why you're working for them? That's not fair. Just a question. We do not all have the luxury of choosing who we work for, do you? I'd like to go to that garlic tank and those capitalists a piece of my mind. You're not going near any anywhere in the capitalist house tonight. And you do not come on now, Marcus. You should as well. You know he's right. I beg your pardon? I think someone should go to the gal tonight and do some spying on that madcap Tybalt. 
Why not us? But it's foolhardy for one. It is a mask, isn't it? No one will see us. Yes, but I... Then relax. We're going to pay a visit to Capulet House tonight. Besides, for Julie Capulet is a rare beauty. And I'd like to meet her. That is... Certain. I need to be sure that Juliet will be properly cared for. She has no idea of how to manage her finances, I can assure you of that. Perfectly understandable. Might I ask who is the man? A Lord Paris Kensington. Okay. Just. Uh, ah, she'd be delighted, no doubt. I do hope so, although I have found it to be quite wayward of late. But at least my mind will be at ease. And your husband's as well, I'm sure. Oh, thank you, Mr. Lawrence. It is very good to have you here while Lord Capit is away. I'm afraid I have yet to hear from him. We're most courageous, madame. Should you be faster by day, I hope. Soon a trip to the East Indies will be as cool as we saw down the street. Oh, what a dreadful prospect. I hope it will not come to that. Well, I'm all some pressing business to attend to. Not much less than all that. Good day, Mr. Lawrence. I have no doubt, madam. What's that, Wiggins? Nothing, madam. Rosie has dusted and polished every room but the library. Now that you've arranged everything on your new bookcase, I expect she'll finish here. Well, please make sure she doesn't spend an excessive amount of time here. There's a great deal to do elsewhere. Are there any letters from Lord Capulet? No, ma'am, but he's only been gone a week. I don't expect we'll hear from him until he's arrived at court. What you expect does not interest me, Wiggins. Now please make sure that Cook does not waste any strawberries in the garnishes. I hate a wanton disregard for budgeting. I shall be sure to mention your ladyship's disapproval of the strawberry garnishes. Are there any other wanton activities at which you'd like me to caution the household? Yes, I would like to remind you that no one, not even you, is irreplaceable. Will that be all, madam? Yes, your company here is no longer a bother. Don't pass, Rose. Ah, Juliet. You're looking unusually sallow today. What are you wearing this evening? I thought I'd wear that yellow evening. Oh, no, you look positively ashen and yellow. I will not allow it. But, Father, don't, don't speak. <laughs> Your voice is like a locomotive. <laughs> you wear your blue chiffon. <laughs> don't be late and don't sing. If you ruin this evening, I can promise you a week of solitary in your room. Understood? Good. <laughs> now, you know I only say all this because I care for you so very much, don't you? I have a very important surprise for you this evening, and I need you to be resplendent. Now, fetch Wiggins and tell her to bring me some peppermint tea. You've given me a headache. <laughs> yes? Is everything arranged? I told you not to call me here. Yes or no? Yes. Everything's in order. You better not miss this one. Don't forget, you've got a lot to lose if this goes south. I didn't, and it won't. No one suspects anything. Good. And the body? It's been taken care of. I have to go. Why? See you tonight. That's where it goes.
There's your warbling for once. Oh, nonsense. Sing. Yes, yeah, sing. Oh, very well. But I must warn.
It's a shame her stepmother is so harsh. I agree. But she'd like to meet her, I think. I knew you weren't here, Spiron Tibble. Yes, Ben, you're very smart. <laughs> so, I suppose you'll ignore me if I tell you that is a terrible idea. Correct! <laughs> I think I'll check the window. Well, good luck, old chap. <laughs>
really. Juliet is all turning around. Jessica, you'll never guess who I've been with tonight. Go ahead, guess. Oh, clearly been exercised with utility, my lady. Very well. Who do you suppose I met tonight but Romeo Montague? That indeed is a surprise. Yes, he was so charming. Even you would think so to yourself. Really? Yes, he felt for me an instant and saw each other. It was love at first sight. I took slightly longer because of a modern woman. I'm full of complex. No, it wasn't until he was sitting there, his hand in mine, my complexion enhanced by the moonlight, and him unable to take his eyes off me. Oh, I imagined I looked just glorious. That dress really was just the thing. I got to right. Yellow never was my color. Blue was a far better choice. Anyway, as we sat there utterly enraptured with one another, I had this brilliant little thought. And would you believe it? He's going to marry me. <laughs> oh, he doesn't know it yet. Thinks it's a sham wedding to get me out of marrying that stuffy buffoon Augustus got me engaged to. But I made arrangements for a real one. Oh, what a lark it will be when he finds he signed a real marriage certificate. Yes, a lark. Hmm. Delightful, isn't it? What a so surprise. But forgive me, my lady, what if he does not want to marry you? Doesn't want to marry me? The thought had never occurred to me. I suppose it's possible, but it's highly unlikely, dear. It is perhaps more likely than you suppose. Oh, Jerissa, you wouldn't understand. What we have is real. He's going to be as pleased as punch. I know very of such as Lady Juliet. But my heart tells me a marriage conceiving reception is likely to be an unpleasant one. Perhaps this is true. This is a very small deception. I'm sure he won't mind. Besides, I'm very rich. One finds that money can be instrumental in smoothing things over. Well, I hope so. I'm sure you all will be well, except perhaps this dress is fit. <laughs> <laughs>
If she asks you what? It's not her real But I just feel it's a bit fast. Yes, a bit. I know, so stop it. What about Teresa? Teresa? We're just friends. So do you mean to tell me you're actually considering this? Of course not. I just feel, I just feel terrible. I didn't mean to lead her on. I just wanted to meet her. Well, you had better tell her right away before this whole thing blows up in your Stop head. Stop reprimanding me. <laughs> well, well, well. Romeo wants you. I would, you, sir. Not now, Tybalt. I want no more of this quarreling. No? That was you at the gala last night, wasn't it? Though you were disguised, I recognized your voice. I think we better leave. How dare you corrupt our congregation with the filth of your name? Tybalt, put this dispute to rest. There are more hearts at stake here than yours and mine. To be sure, your heart is at stake. I shall slash you. Do not make me fight you. I shall not. Defend yourself, Monty. You'll not harm him, sir. Out of my way, Marcus! On my soul, Tybalt. You shall pay dearly for this. Ready to fight me now, coward? Marcus! Marcus, are you right? <coughs> hey, Liz. I got myself in the way ahead of it. You were right. No, it's, it's gonna be fine, love. I'm gonna need your help. I don't want to die. I'm so sorry. That's enough, my darling. That's enough. Rest your head now. Hush. Shh. You'll feel better soon, and we'll talk all about it. But hush now and listen. Still now and listen. Hush, love, and listen. Everybody sees you. Thank you. I will write to you. And I will send word of the safety return. What about Juliet? I never told her. I will speak to Juliet. You must go with the police. They'll be looking for you. I shall tell them. Tell them the truth. Tybalt has murdered an innocent boy. Now both are dead. And I am to blame. Go! Vows too need to be succinct, but adequate. 
conservative, but reckless. <laughs> <laughs> we really should discuss the matters in America. Oh, I also thought that he could get his little strings and hang them all over. <laughs> I just want to make sure the house is being kept up properly. As do I, sir, but I haven't noticed anything out of the ordinary. Don't you smell that? I've had someone complain to her parents that there's something musty in here. I do. I think it's a bit stale in here is all. Perhaps Rosie. I'll get some rose water to refresh the place up a bit. That's just the thing, Miss Williams. I knew you'd have an answer.
Like the things that she's done, they were beautiful. She's done beautiful, beautiful things for me. Never know what you have till it's gone. I, I have to go back. <laughs>
not survive the trip to Bombay. Please accept our deepest condolences. Sincerely, Bartholomew Martin, first to me. <laughs> oh dear God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> One way, Capulet. Let's go on the paper some tea. Did 
anyone. A company? No, she was alone. Yes, she was in secret while I sent a telegram to Romeo the same plan. Juliet returns home to find Mr. Lawrence and Lady Augusta, who had just received a letter with news of Lord Catherine's death at sea. Romeo boards the train bound for London. The train departs at 11.05, including a taxi ride. <gasps> that puts him at Catholic House at quarter past three. Is this correct, Lord Montague? Yes. I remember because I ran into Miss Wiggins on the street and she asked me for the time. It was 310. Lady Augusta hears man's voice in the library and enters to find Romeo Montague and the cause of her stepdaughter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can imagine my dismay. At which point he ran out to phone the police. Is that correct? That is correct. The entire household was notified. Oh, um, all except me, Mum. I was out on an errand. Were you sending a telegram, Miss Wiggins? Why, yes, sir, I was. How did you know? Your boots are smashed with mud, indicating you've been walking in a particularly busy street in some haste. The post office at St. Martin's closes at 3.30, which would explain why you asked Romeo for the time as he rushed out the door. Just a simple deduction, really. That's enough of that. Let's talk about motive. Romeo Montague had lots of motive to kill the lady. She's trying to force him to marry her. Yes, if he already killed Tibbles, he hates the Capulets. If you're going to accuse Romeo, you might as well accuse me. I was the only other person who knew about the sleep potion. But what if the apothecary just mixed up the wrong potion? And it got a kill? I have but one more question, and then I shall answer you all. Constable, at what time did you receive a call from Lady Augusta reporting an intruder in her house? The call was made at 310 on the dock, sir. So, if at 3.10, Miss Wiggins was passing Romeo on the street and asking for time, that means this call was made before Romeo had even entered. Mm -hmm. the Very well. I shall now slay my findings. There was one point that Romeo just hit upon that everyone else seems to have forgotten. Juliet's trip to the apothecary. She was not alone. Someone else was with her as well. Someone in this very room. Lord Paris Kensington. You were there, were you not? I. <laughs> what? <laughs> I have been fuddled at this accusation. <laughs> Indeed. Why then don't you show us what is in your waistcoat pocket? I most certainly will not do pockets into curl in place. Do what Mr. Holmes says, Lord Paris. This is an outrage. I've never been so insulted in my life. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. a vial, just as I suspected. This was the potion that Juliet originally purchased. Somehow Lord Paris much must have switched it out. Perhaps you would enlighten us. I will do nothing of the kind. You are discriminating miscreant and have no proof. <laughs> Actually, I do. You see, when Watson asked if anyone had accompanied Juliet to the library, oh, excuse me, not the library, that was much later in the story. If anyone had accompanied her to the apothecary, it was you who answered first. You could have not possibly known you she was alone unless you had followed her there. A chance meeting the street, a collision, perhaps, would allow you to switch out her potion for a vial of poison. She did not recognize you because you were dressed as someone else. I believe, in fact, that you address as an American. Mr. Andrew Draper. Constable, would you please remove Mr. Draper's wig and moustache and show us all what he really looks like? Oh, oh what well, <laughs> <laughs> This is never pulled up in here. I am right. <laughs> Mr. Draper has been several petty times in America. You've been? But what could Mr. Draper possibly hope to gain? Death. Well, in the event of Lord Catherine's death, the money was then going to leave Juliet, and at Juliet's death, it was then divorced for Lady Augusta. Indeed! However, Mr. Draper's plan was put to effect before anyone knew of Lord Catherine's death at sea. And that is the problem. Someone already did know that Lord Catherine was dead. Miss Wiggins, would you kindly hand me the telegram you sent earlier today? Just as I suspected, the handwriting on the letter 
and the handwriting on the telegram are a match. Dearest mother, and in I have struck it rich in England, can't wait to tell you about it. We'll be coming back with new names just as soon as the will is executed. Regards to father, sincerely, Agnes. Miss Wiggins? I'm afraid not. Lady Augusta, would you kindly step away from that bookcase? Would you have so awfully been attempting to conceal? <clears throat> Observe the indentation in the couplet, suggesting that the old bookcase was of a different size. The shellness of the shell. A book will scarcely fit. This bookcase is the key to the entire case. I'm afraid that smell is not the late Lady Juliet, but rather the late Lord Capulet. <gasps> oh my god! He never made it to India, did he, Lady Augusta? Or should I say, Miss Agnes Draper? <laughs> oh. Oh, <my> god. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot! How could you be so stupid? The bookcase! You hid him in the bookcase. <laughs> well, I'm sorry for getting creative! Someone that had me help puff! <laughs> First, you marry the man without even making sure your name's on the bank account before you move right on to step two and bump him off. Then, you hide him in a bookcase in the middle of your house? How could you be so stupid? What an amateur! Oh, don't call me amateur, mister! I had the vial of potion in my pocket! So very well. The character of Lord Paris Kensington was Plan B. I see Mr. Draper would marry Juliet, thus gaining control of her money. They <laughs> <laughs> discovered that Juliet was perfect. They had a problem. You of course I heard you. Your whispers like a foghorn. <laughs> There was one last contingency plan. Kill Juliet, and Agnes would inherit the entire fortune. She had but to prove that Lord Capulet was dead, without incriminating herself. Thus, the letter this afternoon. Unfortunately, Miss Draper's overconfidence got the better of her, and she also sent a telegram to Miss Wiggins, not realizing it to confirm her as Lord Capulet's killer. She must have seen Romeo in the street, realized he would be a convenient scapegoat, and so phoned the police before he even entered Capulet's house. Any questions? Well, don't all sit there so stunned. <laughs> yes, he killed Juliet. Yes, he killed her father, too. Yes, he killed them both to get the dough. Does that sound so very crazy to your little narrow minds? Always right and wrong, and right and wrong. Romeo and Juliet certainly does not, but the story of Romeo and Drissa ends with both. 
At Romeo's trial, an old apothecary testified in his defense. No one remembered her being there the day Marcus and Tybalt died, but that is probably because she was a witch. I am happy to tell you that the local magistrate was so intimidated by her that he immediately granted Romeo onto the apartment. On the day he was released, he and Teresa sailed to America to start a new story together. The Capulets and the Montagues did not immediately get inside. Their redemption came slowly and painfully over the course of many generations, but eventually they learned to forgive.